Hello and welcome to this information and guidance video from Valley York Academy. My name is Matt Halifax, I am the Vice Principal and I'm going to take you through this first one of several videos that are here to support, guide and advise both parents and students through the options process for 2021. In this video I'm going to cover a couple of points outlined on the screen there. First one being, why are we doing options now? I'm going to give you some key information through the options process and explain our curriculum provision and offer. So, why are we asking your child to make their options now in year eight? Firstly, there are many positives to taking your options now. I appreciate these are unusual times in unprecedented circumstances and your child's learning has been disrupted in their time here at Vale of York through the tail end of year seven and as we are experiencing now in year eight. This is also more of a reason why we should be doing options as it will allow us to focus upon the learning in the subjects that they will eventually take to examination. That is not to be, however, at the expense of a breadth of education for the child. And although they will be narrowing and reducing the number of subjects that they will study as they progress into Key Stage 4, there is still a wealth of opportunities that we are very proud of offering at the Vale of York, where children can continue to pursue active interests in subjects and curriculum areas that they may not necessarily take to examination. The reason why we have chosen to do it in year eight, and we have successfully managed to do this over the last four or five years, is that you may not be aware that the exam process and exam demands changed. And the reason why we have a three year key stage four is it allows sufficient time for all of our learners, not only to cover the content that they will need in the exams, but also to learn the key skills so that we can produce lifelong learners, not just in one particular subject, but learn skills that are then transferable onto post-16 studies and ultimately into the world of work. As I mentioned, the exam process has changed and they are much more focusing on terminal exams. That means exams at the end of the course. So having this extra time allows us not only to cover the content, learn the skills, but also prepare our pupils for the demands of an increased number of examinations. And finally, I genuinely believe working with year eight and talking with year eight students year on year is that they're ready for the new challenges that GCSE and other courses can offer as they continue to progress with their education. We are very proud of what we do at the Vale of York. And we have a very simple commitment to our curriculum, and that is to support, challenge, and to infuse all pupils. That can be summarised in the school motto, always giving the best. I'm sure you are aware that this was recognised at our recent inspection in October 2019, where, there was a, where we were told that our curriculum is well thought out. So what does that actually look like? Well, it, what it means is we have high standards and expectations for all of our learners, wanting them to achieve the best outcomes so they can progress onto the next steps of maybe their educational career, but moving on ultimately to be responsible citizens in society and contribute in a meaningful way. We do that by excellent standards of teaching and learning and providing innovative ways in which we can engage your child. And as I've already mentioned, we are exceedingly proud of the wide range of opportunities that are available to enhance our curriculum. Slight change of direction now, I just want to give you the overview of what binds us. I'm sure you're aware the Department for Education provides a set of criteria that every school in the country must follow. And that can be summarised in the fact that each school should offer a broad and balanced curriculum, offering a range of qualifications. However, there are some compulsory subjects 
that are core to every, every uh, school in the country. And the compulsory subjects are outlined there. No surprise, I wouldn't have thought. That is GCSE English, GCSE Maths, Science, and also a religious studies course. There is also clear guidance from the Department of Education that there should be time in the timetable for core PE and personal, social and health education. And that includes IAG, which is information, advice and guidance, which is particularly pertinent for our students with a wealth of post-16 providers in the city. Students will take, as it says there, between eight and 10 different qualifications through examination, depending on the pathways they will take. And I'll explain the pathways in the next video. We offer two key types of qualifications. The first one is GCSE. They tend to be more traditional subjects and are terminally assessed, tending to be exams at the end. And if you have children, have uh, siblings or went through GCSEs your, yourself, the recent demands means that the coursework element is significantly reduced. They are awarded in grades nine to one. We also offer a suite of Cambridge national qualifications, non-GCSEs. These tend to be more vocational and orientated towards the world of work. They tend to be more practical subjects and have a greater emphasis on coursework. As you can see, they're not awarded nine to one, but in a various different level one and level two grading. It is important to say that working with our post-16 partners, they recognize both qualifications equally. The reason I mention this is because it is worthwhile considering the type of course you wish to study whether you want to take terminally assessed exams or whether working through a course that has an increased amount of coursework suits you as a learner. The DfE also provide a strong recommendation. Not only should we have a broad and balanced curriculum, but there should be beyond the core curriculum, a set of subjects that students continue to follow. These are often known as the EBAC or English Baccalaureate subjects. And they are outlined there. So we are following the guidance given to us by the DFE, DFE and making it compulsory for students to follow at least one EBAC subject determination. That doesn't mean that it is only one. If students have an active interest in more than one, they can take as many as they wish. As you can see there, the EBAC subjects are geography, history, German, French, computer science, and separate science that is in addition to the core science that all students will follow as part of the compulsory curriculum. More information is available in this guidance sheet, which is straight from the DfE, and it also gives information around why languages are important. This is available on the school website. I'm just going to take a moment to talk about the EBAC. The EBAC is, a is, a, is a, not a paper qualification, but it is a recognised standard of a suite of subjects. And that suite of subjects include English, maths, at least two sciences, one humanity and a modern foreign language. Although, as I said, not awarded by a piece of paper like other qualifications, it is recognised and held in high regard by post-16 providers and more importantly, universities. So it is something that is worth being aware of. You may also hear about progress eight and attainment eight. These are the different measures by which the school is measured by. And it is important that, it, that we as a school offer the broad and balanced education. Progress eight is achieved, attainment eight similarly, by each child coming through the school, following English, maths, two science, one EBAC, and at least three other qualifications. And as it says there, they may also be EBAC as well. We like to ensure that all of our learners are progress and attain an eight compliance. I mentioned earlier on that there are changes to examination. So if you've been through the process and you're familiar with it, I just want to make you aware to some of these changes. As I said, there's a change in grade boundaries outlined by that graphic there. 
the new exams have been, if you like, increased in difficulty and a lot of A-level content has slipped down into GCSEs. Hence, another reason why we run a three-year Key Stage 4 to prepare our learners for this additional content. And also, as I sort of said, there are a lot more exams, terminal and a reduction in coursework. Our curriculum offer is as follows. We run a 25 period week with five periods a day. You can see how the allocation of the three core subjects are allocated there. It is worth noting that whatever option subject you choose, it will not influence the maths and science that you're in or the English group that you are in. Option subjects are taught in mixed ability. And that's purely simply because of the logistics of the numbers taking each subject. Core PE has two periods a week, RE1, and as it says there, PSHE is delivered across the curriculum. So coming to the end of this presentation, I do urge you to watch the other ones as there will be important information about the process for options. But what to do next? There's a range of activities that you can do there that will help you to make the right choices. One thing I will say is consider all options, consider all possibilities, and don't just make quick decisions. I also urge you to listen to the video posted by Ms Barnes, who will offer advice and guidance on how to pick the option subjects you end up taking. Many thanks for listening. Goodbye.